it's JB, Jeremy Borash, and this is the home of UK sports and entertainment, sports5.co.uk. We're here in um, central London with uh, TNA's uh, Jeremy Borash, who's been with the company from day one. And um, how did you first get into the wrestling business, Jeremy? Uh, first got in the wrestling business, just out of a uh, crazy story, actually. Uh, I was working in radio, and uh, long story short, I was nominated for, a, for the biggest award, I'm still the youngest person ever nominated for the Marconi Award in America, that's the, that's the top award in radio. Uh, I was 20 years old at the time. At that award ceremony, I was offered a job to go work mornings at a station in Minneapolis, where I grew up. I took that job, lasted three weeks, tanked, went from the top of the world to the bottom, and went back to the station I started at when I was 15 years old, which of all things was a Christian radio station. And the general manager of the station was a huge wrestling fan and an old AWA ring announcer. And on Saturday mornings, they had a sports block, and I pitched him the idea of doing a wrestling show, and he went for it because he was crazy. And so I actually, my first foray in wrestling was doing a 90-minute um, weekly talk show, a wrestling show on a Christian radio station, which I think is probably the only time in history that's ever happened. I mean, if you listen to your religious stations, you're not going to hear too many uh, things talked about in terms of professional wrestling. So I uh, did that radio show, and through that met uh, a guy named Bob Ryder, who still works with TNN, and pioneered a, a show called uh, WSW Live for WSW, pitched Eric Bischoff the idea, and uh, yeah, Six months later, moved myself down to Atlanta, Georgia. Started showing up in the WCW offices without a job. I didn't really have a title, a place to go, anywhere to put my stuff. I just started showing up in the offices because I did this nightly show. So during the day, I'd just go in and uh, nobody really knew what I did. So uh, through that, I just kind of you know, made my way around the office, learned, uh, learned the ropes a little bit, and got to know um, Vince Russo, who kind of gave me my first uh, start in television with, with wrestling and put me on Nitro a couple times. and. Just, uh, just really tried to learn everything I could. Um, I was a huge fan. My first memory as a human being is watching wrestling at the age I figured it out that I was like two and a half uh, watching it at my grandpa's house. So, uh, yeah, just been a lifelong fan, and, and still a fan, still a huge fan. I think that's, um, you know, I think anybody who's in the business that's going to survive and want to make a career out of it, you first and foremost have to be a fan of what you're, what you're involved in. So. Uh, you know, I'll always be a fan. I'll never be a wrestler, but I'll always have a, a fan's perspective, I think, on a lot of things, and I always really respect what the guys do in the ring, and you know, know that that's uh, that's the most important thing is to respect what you're what you're seeing and what, what they do. It's it's unbelievable. And when did you get your first break into uh, becoming a ring announcer? How did one get yeah, into uh, that? I think the first time I was ring announcing was for TNA. Uh, yeah, or maybe, yeah, I did a little bit, and uh, actually before that, uh, after WCW was done, I went to Australia and worked for a company called the World Wrestling All-Stars. In fact, we did a couple tours here in the UK, and on those shows, I was the ring announcer. Uh, on our pay-per-views, I was the play-by-play -play guy, but uh, yeah, just really kind of fell into it. And, you know, from a broadcasting background, whether it's doing the backstage stuff or ring announcing or play-by-play, -play, uh, it's all kind of similar, so... You know, it's been um, just having getting to do all all of them in wrestling has been kind of fun. And were there ring announcers that you um, looked up to or studied, like Bruce Buffer and Michael Buffer? Uh, I like you know Michael Buffer's made a lot of money, and I respect the hell out of that because he's taken a catchphrase and, and ran with it. And, and you know, Bruce Buffer is Bruce Buffer. Uh, I like Jimmy Lennon Jr. I think he's my favorite. But you know, uh, actually, the, my favorite ring announcer I've ever heard was the gal that. Did it for pride. And I don't know if you ever saw her or not. Obviously, they're not around anymore. But um, she was a lady, I think, from Iowa. They brought over, and she was literally she screamed. She screamed the name of the guys. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, just something a little different. So, uh, you know, I don't really pattern myself after anybody. Just try and, you know. But it's been fun because I've, I've gotten to bring it out anywhere from celebrity weddings I've done to the Tokyo Dome in front of forty thousand people. So it's. Uh, yeah, presenting, introducing people, to, you know, in a different way is a unique way to make fun of this. And uh, finally, um, TNA is coming back over here for another Maximum Impact tour in January. Um, what can fans expect from that tour? Well, that, it's going to be cool, really, really cool. Because Sting's going to be here, you know, and it's, it's Sting's first time back in I don't know how long, a long time. 
and uh, you know the show right now. I think Sting is the I think Sting is the most fun guy to watch on our show right now. Uh, and uh, you know, every year the UK tour is the tour that the guys want to be on the most. Uh, we travel all over the place again, get to do. Uh, we're going to South America this year. We're going to Japan again. You know, but every year, without question, the tour that everybody wants to be on is the UK tour. Because the fan response is just better here. And, you know, again, I've told you this before that the response, getting to work in front of fans, means everything. And, and there isn't anything worse than working in front of a crowd that's sitting there on their hands, and there isn't anything better that's than working in front of a crowd that's completely rabid and crazy about what you're doing. And, and you know, at the end of the day, paychecks are paychecks, but. The gratification you get from working in front of an appreciative crowd is, you know, is, is nothing beats it. And any performer will tell you that.